Hey, this is Carrie Ann Michelle. Today, my guest is Nicole Vasquez. We talk about finding the environment that helps you to feel your best, making the most of time, and how to use your lifestyle to help your work style. Hey, Nicole. Hi, Carrie Ann. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. Wonderful to see you. Wonderful to see anybody these days. <laughs> I know, that's how I feel too. And um, you're coming to me from Miami, right? Yes. Yes, bright, bright, and always bright, and sunny, and always warm Miami. Oh, well, I'm a little jealous, although it's summertime here, as you, as you know, so it's, it's pretty wonderful. Um, it's so glad, I'm so glad to have you on this series of Lofty TV, and um, it's just so fun to see your face because I got to spend a lot of time with you when you lived in Chicago, but mm -hmm. um, yes, now you've moved, and so um, I'm just going to share a little bit with our audience about how we know each other, a little bit about you. Um, this is Nicole Vasquez, and she is the co-founder and Chief Community Officer at DeskPass. Um, and we actually met um, when I was at a co-working space in Chicago um, and I became a DeskPass member and that was um, a really amazing thing for me when I was just starting my business. It allowed me to have access to a co-working space. This was a few years ago, pre-COVID. <laughs> we'll talk more about what DeskPass is about. Um, but one of the other things I love about your story is that you are what we consider a serial entrepreneur. And what your focus really has been is building companies and communities that support, they promote, they connect people to the resources, the opportunities that help them reach their goals personally and professionally. And um, so as I mentioned, with the work you're doing right now with DeskPass, um, one of the things I, I read was that you really call that empowering workspace freedom which I think is really cool. And I'd love to start just by understanding what do you mean when you say empowering workspace freedom? Great question. Thanks for asking <laughs> and I'm honored to be here. And of course, I love talking about this. So I'd be happy to explain what we mean by empowering workplace freedom, workspace freedom. The two are interchangeable, so I will use them both. Um, it means that we are helping people and companies pick and choose where their best work happens, whether for themselves or for their employees. So as an individual, let's say freelancer, entrepreneur, or just somebody who works remote for a company whose headquarters is perhaps not in your city, you get to choose every day where you wake up and go work. Uh, or if you are an enterprise team, a Fortune 500 company, you can pick and choose which workspaces that your employees go to. Uh, you can select which ones are closest to them. You can track their usage. You can give them certain expenditures um, so that they can, it could be a benefit for them, um, similar to an HR benefit. So, and then everybody in between, right? Small companies, um, medium-sized companies, everybody in between that range, we help them find out about the best workspace options in their area and where they can do their own best work, whatever that means for them. I think that's amazing. And especially right now, I mean, I'm sure there's been some shifts and changes, you know, in the last several months for your business. But as we think about how we all start to recover in the future, um, we think about, you know, the idea of going back into an office and especially mm -hmm. with what we're talking about today with self-care, well-being and feeling comfortable feeling at ease. Um, I could see where there could be a big benefit to knowing there's some options for, for companies and for the employees. Mm -hmm. And everybody has their own range of w when they will feel safe going back into workspaces. And a lot of workspaces pr provide a variety of options for these employees to feel safe. Um, and so everybody is on their own time in this return back to this new normal. So yeah, I encourage everybody to just stay safe and do what makes you feel comfortable, but if you can, certainly get out of the house because we're all feeling a little frazzled at home, I'm sure, by now. <laughs> I know, and you know, as I think about that, um, before I jump into some of our questions, you know, it's been interesting, even my own experience, I have one client I work with that's downtown Chicago and he's maintained um, his office space. It's very large and there's not a lot of people that are really coming in. Um, mm -hmm. And I was very, very nervous uh, mm -hmm. to think about, you know, leaving, I've been able to work at home and I've missed my co-working spaces, but I, I've been okay. And I was very nervous about going downtown. But once I took that first step and I did it, it was really uh, something that for my own well-being and, and psychology, really, it helped to help my emotional well-being as well. Just to feel what it's like to go back into an office um, mm -hmm. to understand that I was okay. Um, I was safe. You know, I did, we, we made it all work in a way where, you know, people had masks on, there were precautions in the building, mm -hmm. big high-rise downtown. 
Um, but it was okay. And I actually, it felt really nice to see some people. And I do that once a week. Um, and that's been a small step for me to start feeling reintegrated to whatever will come. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that and for sharing the way that it felt and your apprehension. I certainly was the same case. Like, look, even though I'm encouraging people to go to workspaces and we built out all these features to allow people to stay safe and know what they need to do when they get there, I was also worried. Um, and so was my husband. So the first time we went, you know, we had our masks on too. And it's, look, everybody has their own journey. Everybody has their own medical background. And it is not on me to tell people, everybody go back to the office. Uh, you know, I am here to provide a platform and information that will help people navigate that, but everybody should do it on their own time and the way that they feel comfortable and by keeping themselves safe. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, one of the things that I'd love to kind of roll into talking about then is, you know, I met, I remember after that experience for me, you know, thinking about self-care, um, you know, it, in one way it was sort of a form of professional self-care, just helping myself to have a safe experience, coming home mm -hmm. and talking about it with my partner, sort of, you know, understanding that was okay. Um, I would be curious for you around the idea of self-care, you know, what is something that you've committed to that you're really proud of as you kind of think back the last few months of time? So I'm going to go and put something really big out there, but then I'm going to explain quickly that uh, it was a lot of small steps. So my self-care recently was legit moving to Miami from Chicago. And for the past two years, we had been living here for six months uh, to escape the Chicago winter because in my early 30s, I'm 35 now, and it probably took me till about 30, 31 to really recognize how hard winter was on me every year. And it wasn't just like, I hate the cold. Like I legit did not feel well. Uh, I actually found out that I have rain odds, which means I have bad circulation. And so in the winter, I'm actually more prone to have frostbite. I get my toes and my fingers get numb. Like even if it's above freezing, if it's like 35 degrees, I feel clammy and cold. And so it took me almost 30 years to recognize that other people weren't going through winter the way that I was. Um, and luckily my husband, he doesn't have those like um, health issues, but he like mentally felt the same way where we were like six months out of every year, we felt stuck inside. We were in act, um, not as active as we'd like to be. You know, I joke around, I live in Chicago, but I feel like a New Yorker because I love to walk everywhere. Um, and so I was unable in the winter to walk anywhere. I was unable to do anything outside. I'm a big water sports person, a big sun person. And I just wasn't getting that in Chicago, six, sometimes seven or eight months. We all know how spring can be in Chicago, almost non non-existent. And so for the past two years, we were testing out Miami, um, and we realized that we thrived here. And so we moved here because we felt our best. Every day, the sun coming through the windows, the ability for us to go for a walk, how everything is basically indoor, outdoor down here, it really spoke to us. I have friends that love the mountains. I have friends that love the West Coast or the East Coast. For us, this was the environment that spoke to us. And then the past two years when we were here, we really recognized that we were at our absolute best. Um, and that's actually what caused us to move. And so that was a huge leap for me, leaving friends and family um, back in Chicago but I have never felt the most comfortable and at my best. And um, I just wish I figured that out sooner. <laughs> and of course, there was a lot of little steps. And I'm not, you know, if you want to move, go for it. Maybe it's just finding an environment that you work best in. So um, whether it's just a place that you go to every day or even a spot in your home that perhaps is not allowing you to feel your best, um, change it up because your environment is very important. Yeah, I love that story. And I think that there is a big um, takeaway out of that too. And I, I would be curious along that journey. I mean, what was it like for you and your husband to sort of check in on how it was feeling? Did you have, you know, did you kind of just ask each other that once a month? Was it the type of thing where, you know, maybe I'd be curious both checking in with him as well as yourself, you know, how did you mm -hmm. kind of gauge other than of course, it just feeling wonderful to be in the sunshine? What were some of those factors that helped you to confirm this is really where I'm thriving? So we actually, when we were considering moving, we recognized the number one thing that was not great in our life was the winter. And it was the cold weather and the inability to be active due to the cold weather, also due to like the gray skies and that just kind of feeling of blah. And we said, if we could take that out of our life, everything else in our life is 
pretty great. Like we like everything else. So it's really just that cold weather. So we made a list of all of number one of where are the warm weather places in the U S so that chopped off like the greater half, the, the, the Northern part of the U S. So then looking at that, my husband said, well, I need to be close to, you know, Chicago, New York, Miami, that area because of his work. And so that chopped off the left side of the U S. <laughs> and then I said, we both said, we want to be in a big city, um, and we very much value diversity. And so it brought us down to Atlanta, Austin, and Miami. And it really, so we went based on elements that would bring us joy and that were very important to us. Um, and then out of those three cities, Miami really spoke to us. And then we tested it out um, for two years, snowboarding. Um, and then finally, because of COVID and realizing if we're going to be stuck inside all day long, let's find a place that really allows us to feel our best. That's why we made the move. So for us, working backwards um, based on those environmental factors was the way that we went about it. Thank you for explaining that. I think that's actually really <laughs> helpful because I'm sure that there are other people who are, you know, listening or watching who, you know, maybe in a situation where because of COVID, it sort of triggered the opportunity, you know, whether I, I find mm -hmm. for a lot of people, I, I teach a lot of workshops to career changers and people will say, you know, I'm finding myself in a new place in life maybe not of my own choice, but I'm trying to use it to the best of my ability to think about what I want. And mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to mean to move across, you know, country, like you say, it's kind of more just understanding your environment. That could be something very mm -hmm. small you shift. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money, but it also could be if there's something that you're realizing you want in terms of your day to day, you know, that this can be some time and space to th really think about that. And I, mm -hmm. I just love how you were able to kind of articulate what those, what those steps were. I, that's really helpful. And I'm so glad to hear that you're in a place where you are thriving because that's what we ultimately want. And I, you know, as I think about that and I think about thriving and kind of having that balance of self care, when you think about self care for your business, you know, what does that mean to you as you think about it from a business perspective? I love this question because I always think of my journey from more than six years ago now when I quit my job to start my first co-working space. And just, I always think of the graph of like when I first started, it was like one company and then I got two. And then when I had like three and then doing two side projects and I was completely maxed out, like it was like this and it was like craziness. And then it was taking the past two years to truly scale down and figure out how to be the most efficient in my business, but truly also how I can have a sustainable work uh, life. And what I think now the most important thing is to know how you work best. And so after all that journey, um, I recognize that I work best doing one and one thing only, folk, hyper focus work at one time, so time blocking, but also recognizing my schedule. So I'm a morning person. I wake up early. I have a lot of energy in the morning. I also have a lot of energy later, but <laughs> a lot more energy in the morning. Um, and so that's when I can just jump into either personal or professional things. So really leveraging my morning. But then I also looked at, okay, for my work, I oversee our support team. And in the morning, that's when the most time sensitive, um, demanding part of my work is. And so I specifically make sure that, you know, between the hours of maybe eight to 10 a.m., I am heads down focused on very high priority stuff. And then after that is when I do calls and, and meetings and things like that. So I know that some people may not have the ability to choose when they're on phone calls, but even if it's like, hey, no phone calls until after 10 a.m. because that's when you really need to hack away at stuff. So I have learned to truly leverage my work style, which is early morning uh, with my work schedule, which is getting the most important demanding things off my plate so that I can take phone calls and video calls after about 1030 a.m. I love that. I'm taking some notes while you're talking, but I, I like what you said about, you know, leveraging your work style along with your work schedule. I think there's some True. interesting insight there for anyone. So, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you know, sometimes you get to make your own schedule. Other times you don't. Like you said, you know, when there's when your customers and the customer service has, you know, kind of peak hours, well, that's going to tell you where you need to focus on your business. But exactly. Um, and it's nice. It sounds like that that does coincide with not only maybe your work style, but a little bit of who you are if you have energy in the morning. Morning. That's really mm -hmm. nice. Um, did it take you a while to get the hang of this? I know you kind of talked about the six year journey into entrepreneurship. Um, what are some of the ways that you sort of figured that out? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I definitely preach now like work life balance. And if you truly put in eight hours of undistracted, 
focused work, that is plenty of work. But how, how many of us are actually putting in eight hours of undistracted, no Facebook, no phone calls, text, you know, personal things? And we're not, right? We're, get, we're constantly being pulled away. And so what I tell people is like, look, when you first start your business, I was working 11 hours a day, seven days a week. And I loved every minute of it. But a year and a half into it, it was completely unsustainable. I always joke around, you know, I had a boyfriend at that time. I don't know why I had one because I never saw him. You know, <laughs> like I that was a miracle in itself is my joke. But like, you know, after a year and a half, I, I started to feel it. You know, I started to feel that I didn't see my friends, my family. I was overworked um, and not earning enough to pay myself what I should be earning for those types of hours. So it really forced me to optimize my business and then seek out partners and eventually sell my first co-working space so I could get it off my plate. And so you have to listen to those cues. And it was like, for six months, I was like, I'm overworked. I don't have any help. How do I do that? So the first step was finding a manager, negotiating the, that type of partnership with her. And then after that, it was nice for three months. And then I realized I still don't have enough time to myself, which is when I figured out, you know, okay, let's find someone so I can sell this place because I have I had two other companies at that time. So it was really just listening, paying attention to what wasn't working and then recognizing that and saying, okay, I still have to do the work, but I'm going to continue to figure out ways to optimize this or get it off my plate. I think that that's, that's also really important advice. You know, when I think about what you were saying about your first kind of 11 months that, you know, is you were loving every minute, maybe, maybe you said 11 hours a day. Sorry, the numbers are in, but all of it, all of it's applicable. There was no starter end point. A year plus you, you know, and I can relate to that. I remember when I got out of corporate America and I found myself, you know, working for myself and it was challenging, but it was a new challenge. I was learning new things. I was having some wins here and there getting business. So I was starting to make some money and it felt really good. And you sort of think, well, this is what this is about. You know, I'm on this high learning curve. Um, you know, I know a lot of other entrepreneurs that are just kind of like grinding away and that's, but I'm, but I'm passionate. So I'm, I'm caring for myself and there's definitely truth in it. But I remember one of the best pieces of advice I received in my first year is I met up with an old coworker who had had his own company for about eight years. Um, and he and his partner were willing to, you know, take a kind of a coffee meeting and share what they learned. And his partner turned to me and said, what are your hobbies? I mean, he didn't ask me, like, tell me about your business. He said, oh, we're so, you know, we're glad to help be a mentor for you. What are your hobbies? And I said, oh, well, I mean, gosh, I, you know, I have a lot of them, but I haven't really, you know, I've been having so much fun. And he said, well, I got to tell you, my number one piece of advice for you is that you need to pick one of those back up. And he told me the same yeah. similar story that, you know, transitioning, doing something he loved, it was great, but it was the same type of thing. And for him, it was about a year and a half. And he hit, you know, burnout and he wasn't spending time mm -hmm. with his wife and she was kind of willing to go along with that. But then it really started to, his self-care wasn't there. Therefore, his business started to suffer. So all of that mm -hmm. equation got off. And for him, it, he found out he liked horseback riding. And it was one of those things yeah. where he could um, completely detach. So he, you know, he'd mm -hmm. leave his cell phone in the car. He found a place out in the country in Illinois because he's from Chicago and he and his wife would go do that together. Um, you know, once a weekend. And it was a day that he would commit to turning off. And he said the second year of his business or so, once he did that and giving himself that time back, same sort of thing as you, he started to see, um, I sh I, I, it's not serving me to work this many hours, you know, and it's mm -hmm. more about what do I cut back and refine so I get the most out of that time. I love it. And that's wisdom and through experience. And that's why if you can start a business and be that efficient and well balanced in the beginning, God bless you. Like, yes. I, good for you. Unfortunately, I, I, I'm a learner by doer, so I make a lot of mistakes and I have to go through that. Like, I wouldn't give up the experience I had in the beginning, but I certainly would not want to go back to that now. And then now, if I was to start another business, I would take those lessons and set it up properly from the beginning. But like, yeah, it was a hard time, but I'm grateful for it, but it's definitely not sustainable. So I'm glad that's a great story. And I love that wisdom and also the ability to, you know, let loose and disconnect. That's what cooking is for me. It's the time I don't look at my phone. I don't look at my computer. Um, and everybody deserves to have a, a moment like that. Many moments like that. <laughs> well, and I think too, that's another thing I like to, as I've been having these conversations, point out different forms of self-care. So, you know, you mentioned cooking for you, you mentioned unplugging and just being focused on that activity. And I think sometimes people don't always think about that that is a form of self-care. Um, mm -hmm. It's spending time, you know, maybe just with yourself, but also with your family, just potentially on, on how you're cooking. But, you know, something that you love and allows you to just completely focus on that one thing that you're doing. Yeah. 
It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, the other thing. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I know. It's, it's a beautiful thing. No distractions. It doesn't happen often, but um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, I mean, along those same lines, the other thing I was thinking about when you were telling that story about getting started into where you are and you were talking about even now working, you know, an eight hour day and the reality that um, it is hard if you really ask yourself, am I staying focused in a time blocked period of time? I started to use time blocking in my own calendar in the last few months because I got away from it. And that is something that keep, keeps me on task because I know, mm -hmm. okay, I've, I've put that proactive thinking in for myself. I've organized my time and I owe it to myself to follow that through, but it is not easy. There are a lot of times I'm in the middle of a project and I catch myself in my email. Yep. And I'll think, how did I get here? <laughs> you know? I don't know. Do you keep the little tab open where you see the number increasing? Because that's like a death wish there. If you do that, you will always like. <laughs> no, I don't. Your, but... mind, your mind wanders. Look, you're, you're juggling a lot of things and you're human. Your brain, you might be heads down. And that's OK. And I think recognizing it's the same with meditation, right? Like you it, sometimes things come through. You just have to accept it and let it pass. And we all make mistakes. But yeah, it, it, time blocking is great if you can stick to it. But um. Sometimes we find ourselves in our emails. <laughs> yes, I know, but I agree with you. As much as notification turns off, turn off as you can is is great. Um, and I liked one of the things you said before we actually kind of got on is you had said it's sort of like almost like you're on a little vacation. You know, you're sort of okay. Mm -hmm. I'm turning these. We were talking about getting on live here and okay, let's make sure our notifications are off. And it's like, whoo, okay. <laughs> yeah, it feels great to turn them off. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is obviously in the last several months, things have changed for everybody, no matter where you are in the world. And we are in a new normal and in kind of a changing time. Um, and I'd be curious as you think about, you know, living in this time of, I mean, especially like in Chicago, you know, we've had a lot of protests. So there's some uncertainty in that. We've got uh, a pandemic happening, you know, and uh, uncertainty about health. Um, and I'd be curious, you know, what, what motivates you right now? to keep going with self-care, maybe in a moment you're feeling stuck, you know, especially with all this swirl of uncertainty happening. What, what, what do you do? <laughs> I sat with this question for a while thinking about how I'd want to respond. And the reason is, is in the beginning of the pandemic, a lot, you know, my girlfriends and I would talk often about how are you feeling, you know, check-ins. And there was always a range of, you know, I feel stuck or I feel great today. And people's, um, energy and emotions would vary from day to day. And um, I noticed that my go-to was always, I just have to get to work. Like I might wake up and feel a little stuck or a little unmotivated. And once I got into my work, it just, it was a welcome distraction, but I wanted to, to dissect that and ask like, well, what was that? Was it a feeling of purpose? Was it motivation? And yes, I am blessed where I love what I do. And it is my company along with my partners where we every extra hour we put in you know, we're building something that we believe in, but there's a layer below that, which is, I don't, and I came down to it, which is, I just don't want to waste any time. Like we are in a pandemic and we are at home more often. We have more time to ourselves. And I used to dream about this, you know, I'm a total book nerd. Like I, on a Saturday, all I want to do is read books and like, just learn and do things. And before the pandemic, I was pulled every which way for social obligations, professional obligations. And like, now I have this time and I always wanted it. And for me to not make the most of it would be such a waste. And so, you know, I put in my full day, a lot of times much more than a full day, but then in the evening, like I am stressed and I'm worried and anxious about the way that the world is going and how long is this going to last? But ultimately like, I always ask myself, like, what do I want to do with this precious time? And usually, yes, there's, you know, here and there nights where I'm like, I just want to Netflix and chill, right? Because we're human. But the majority of times, it truly is like, well, I want to make the most of it. So for me, like, I just, life is short. I don't want to waste any time. And so that's been my motivator to each their own, of course. Um, I just feel like it would be such a waste of this time to not, to not maximize it. So, well, I think that's a really nice perspective to bring into it because I know, you know, on one, one path, you could start to get caught up with, I don't want to waste this time. Oh my gosh, I'm not doing enough of all the things I'd like to do. But on the other hand, it could just be opening up to, okay, 
I don't want to waste this time. So what's one thing I want to do right now? You know? Yeah, exactly. And it's and exactly. And it's not always work. So like I, I already, you know, pre COVID have my goals scheduled out and things like that. But like now with this, you know, a little bit of extra time, no commuting, things like that. Like I asked myself, do I want to take on a new hobby because, you know, in the beginning of the, of the pandemic, or do I just want to increase the work that I'm doing on my current hobbies? And my heart said, I don't, feel like I want to take on anything else right now. So I just added on an hour of dance every day and an hour of my Spanish practice. Cause those are my two, you know, loves right now. Um, and I realized that, yeah, so that, that was how I did it for myself. So really it wasn't like, let me just work all like extra time. It was just more of like, I'm building a better version of myself so that when the world somewhat returns to normal, um, I can show up for it. That, and maybe you'll be able to take some of these new, you know, parts of what you've made time for and keep find ways to keep them going, you know, because it'll yeah. be, have become a new habit, which I think is a, a beautiful way to think about it because uh, it's hard to live through this. So to find those silver linings, linings are really important. Yeah. And actually, I'd like to say really quick, um, the silver linings for me have always been talking with other people. Like I'm, you know, I'm an introvert, extrovert, which a lot of people don't believe, but I really truly need to have a lot of quiet heads down time for myself to be able to be extroverted and, and very social. And, you know, sometimes I often suffer from not talking with people. I like to hold things in and kind of power through things, but I can always rely on my friend, my close friends and family to just be the ones to check in and be like, how are you doing? And then it opens up the conversation. So I think, something that I look back on during the pandemic and I'm so grateful for and continue to be is the love and support from people um, in my life and how it opens up conversation, even if it's a few minutes a day, um, just a check-in. So I've become better at doing that for other people um, as a result of that. And I think it just helped me overall to become a more open person um, for the better. So that's another, I think self-care quickly was just love, pure love. I think, I think that's wonderful and such a good reminder of your community, you know, and that your community yeah. is, you know, whoever might be closest to you right now. My community is definitely shifting and changing um, in the mm -hmm. same way. I'm pretty extroverted, but I find that, you know, when I get kind of nervous or anxious about things, I don't tend to reach out to quite as many people in my life. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, but the power of that small circle for me of those friends and the family um, and just like you said, just reaching out and being able to check in on them and them checking in on you, just saying, how are you doing today? Just today, you know? Is it's amazing powerful. what it does. It is, yeah. Well, this has been great. It's been so fun mm -hmm. to catch up with you. Thank you for your time. Um, the, just the last thing I'd love to know is if, you know, there's somebody listening or watching who's just sort of connected with um, you, you know, your personality, your inspiration, sort of how you go about the world, or they're, they're specifically maybe even thinking about, hmm, I want to learn more about, you know, Desk Pass or what Nicole offers. Um, what, what would you recommend? <laughs> well, personally, uh, I know Nike said it, but I love the phrase, just go for it. So personally, I would say if there's anything that's on your mind, you know, just go for it, think about it, explore it, test it out. Um, but professionally, I love co-working and community building. Like I have been to hundreds of co-working spaces. I love what they do for my productivity and my ability to meet other people. Um, I understand we're in a pandemic now, but just getting out of the house actually like is so great for your mind and your soul and your productivity. So if anybody wants to learn more about co-working and the various ways it can work for them, I'm happy to talk about it. It is not a sales pitch. I will not try to funnel you into my company or into one of my workspaces. Um, it's truly that co-working is still a new thing and it's also rapidly changing right now. So there are um, setups for a corporate executive um, and there are setups for somebody who's starting an entry level job um, and everybody in between small size uh, to large size teams, companies. Um, I can I can just help advise because it makes me happy to know that people are finding the best workplace setup um, that helps them to thrive. So I'm always uh, happy to talk about it because I'm a geek for this stuff. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Well, we will have all of your contact information available for people right where we have this posted. So um, thank you again. Thanks. For, it's so good to see you. I can't say that. I can't say thank you and how good it is to see you enough because you're a person that I haven't seen in a long time. But thanks for spending your time with us. <laughs> thank you. The feeling is mutual and I'm honored to be a part of this. And thank you for everything that you're doing. I think wellness is so important and 
especially now it's shown more than ever, but I'd love that you are prioritizing and allowing people to share their stories because um, they're all different. And perhaps, you know, I'm hoping that my advice can be helpful for a few people and then your next guest can have advice that'll be helpful for others. Thank you. I appreciate that. 